Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare Tofu here bringing you another Minecraft World War II aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Savoia Marchetti SM-79 Spervio. The uh, SM-79 Spervivo, which is Italian for Sparrowhawk, was a three-engined Italian medium bomber developed and manufactured by the aviation company Savoia Marchetti. It is maybe the best known Italian aeroplane of the Second World War. The SM-79 was easily recognizable due to its fuselage distinctive dorsal hump and was reportedly well liked by its crews who nicknamed it El Gobo uh, Maldetto, Damned Hunchback. The SM-79 was originally developed in the early 1930s as a cantilever low-wing monoplane of combined wood and metal construction. It has been designed with the intention of producing a swift eight-passenger tra transport aircraft capable of besting even the fastest of its contemporaries, but it had quickly attracted the attention of the Italian government with its potential as a combat aircraft. Performing its first flight on September 28, 1943, early examples of the type established 26 separate world records between 1937 and 1939, qualifying it for some time as the fastest media bomber in the world. As such, the SM-79 quickly became or came to be regarded as an item of national prestige in fascist Italy, attracting significant government support and often being deployed as an element of state propaganda. Early on, the aircraft was routinely, routinely entered in competitive fly-offs and air races, seeking to capitalize on its advantages, and often emerged victorious in such contests. The SM-79 first saw combat during the Spanish Civil War. In this theater, it normally operated without fighter escort, relying on its relatively high speed to evade interception. While some issues were identified and in some cases resolved, the SM-79's performance during the Spanish deployment was encouraging and stimulated demand for the type, including a decision to adopt it as the backbone of Italy's bomber units. Both Yugoslavia and Romania opted to procure the type for their own air services, while large numbers were also procured for the uh, Regia Aeronautica. Almost 600 SM-79-1 and 2 aircraft were in service with, the, with Italy, at, uh, when, or when Italy entered the Second World War in May 1940. Thereafter, they were deployed in every theater of war in which the Italians fought. The SM-79 was operated in various cap capacities during the Second World War, initially being used mainly as a transport aircraft and medium bomber. Following pioneering work by special aero torpedo units, uh, Italy put forth or put the type to work as a torpedo bomber in this role. The SM-79 achieved notable success against Allied shipping in the Mediterranean theater of war. A specialized drone version of the aircraft was flown by remote control uh, was also developed, although the armistice with Italy was enacted prior to any operational development. It was the most numerous Italian bomber of the Second World War of about 1,300 built. The type would remain in Italian service until 1952. So yeah, the SM-79 here, a... Um, Kind of a very, I guess, big deal aircraft for Italy. Um, I wasn't really too familiar with this aircraft until actually coming across it. It is in War Thunder, and uh, we did use War Thunder a little bit to actually base our model off of it. But a really cool, interesting aircraft, and uh, our first ever Italian medium bomber, or just our first Italian bomber in general for World War II. Hopefully we'll see some more coming in the future, but this bomber here is definitely a really great addition to that as basically the SM-79 was to the Germans uh, HE-111. So, uh, pretty cool aircraft and should be a fun build to add to your World War II maps and basically any theater of war that the Italians did participate. Uh, but without um, further ado, I want to go and use special links to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you already do, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go play the small amount of channel every month. And in doing so, earn a vehicle request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It's really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link will always be in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go ahead and dive in here to take a look at the um, SM-79 um, Spurvio. So, going ahead and getting started with, we have the uh, main fuselage of the aircraft. You'll see here it's very iconic in the fact that it is a three-engined aircraft, which is something that's kind of uncommon um, during that time period, uh, I think really the only other notable aircraft that had a design like this was the uh, JU-52, if I remember correctly. Uh, but yeah, we had three engines, uh, one on, on the center fuselage and then two mounted onto the wings here. So it gives it some pretty good, um, you know, uh, speed and 
I would imagine probably a climb rate and stuff like that with those extra, with that extra engine there. Uh, you have the wings, obviously. To the sides here, we have a nice and a green and brown kind of camo scheme, which seems to be kind of common on this aircraft. Kind of a spotted um, type of color scheme. And uh, we have the cables, obviously, running here to the, um, basically to the cockpit. Uh, some windows. We got the one of the gunners right here, or one of the gunner positions there. As you progress way back, we have the tail of it, and even have like the little insignia here on the back of the aircraft. So kind of kind of looks cool. And then we have the uh, waist gunners, and there's also a gunner position here located on the bottom here of the aircraft as well. So overall, really a uh, cool looking aircraft. Um, has a cool kind of color on the bottom here. This kind of uh, jungle wood. So kind of a light brown under color undercarriage and then you have like the tan and um green and brown kind of color scheme going on on the top here so overall pretty nice build i think it came out really good and should make an awesome addition as i mentioned to your um builds if you're looking for some sort of italian type of aircraft anyways though without further ado let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer all right guys so moving into our first layer we're going ahead and start with layer three now we're starting with layer three because layer three gives us the bare baseline to kind of build off of and um you'll see this here as we go into layers one and two and then go up to layers four from this layer it gives us a good base to kind of start with um in addition a few things i want to mention regarding this tutorial first is that this is going to be for the in-flight version only so if you are looking for a landed version of this aircraft there is currently not one available at the time of recording this video um nor will there probably be one for quite some time if if it does come out at all so just want to throw that out there as well in case you are looking for a landed version this one's not going to work uh you can obviously modify it to make it landed however for it to be accurate it would have to actually sit at an angle um, it would require the entire rework of the aircraft to make it work right. So just want to throw that out there in case any guys you are wanting to uh, want a landed version, you're probably going to have to make something up and kind of make it a little bit unhistorically accurate to make it work. In addition, if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, uh, the for first thing I really want to mention is that we'll be going ahead and building this um, half on half off. What this means is I'm going to be building the center line of the aircraft and then I'll be building the entire right side. It'll be up to you guys in between layers to copy what we do on the right side and copy it over to the left side. There are a few tiny little parts of this that are going to be asymmetrical and I'll talk about those in great detail once we get to those points. But until those points kind of come up, basically whatever's on one side will be done to the other. And lastly, if you are wanting to do the camouflage on this aircraft, we will be adding the cam camouflage at the end of the video as a modification. So stay tuned for that to kind of go over the camouflage a little bit more, a little bit better. Uh, but basically, we're going to be doing the top section, which is going to be that camouflage section of the aircraft. We're going to be going ahead and doing that in a just straight sandstone tan color and uh, leaving it up to kind of a nice flat palette to go back and add the camouflage um, however you choose to do so. So... That right there is pretty much all I wanted to cover, and we should be go good to go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and build our center line of the aircraft. You can see this line right here is our center line. We're going to start off with placing down an iron bar. Coming off the iron bar, going back, we're going to place down a black concrete block, a smooth sandstone upside down stair, and after that we're going to place down a row of uh, strip jungle wood. That's going to go back a total of 12. We're going to go then place down a piston, upside down like so, and um, we're going to leave this piston alone for right now. If you're on a different version of Minecraft, I would probably uh, just place down another jungle wood block right here. Um, so yeah, just uh, another jungle wood block right there if you're on a different version. Um, if you are on Java, we'll place down a piston there. After that block, we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, and 5 more um, strip jungle wood going back. We're going to go ahead and place down two smooth quartz blocks. Again, two pistons upside down. If you're on a different version, I would probably place down... Uh, I'd probably place down maybe a uh, jungle plank upside down stair and jungle top slab um, in there right there instead. That's an option you guys can do. Anyways, um, after that, we're going to then place down two more jungle top slabs and then two jungle trap doors like that going back. And that right there is going to make our center line there for the aircraft. After that's done, going back up to the front, we're going to place down a polished and side upside down stair coming off this um, iron bar. And we're going to go then place down a sandstone stair back from it. Now over here on the left side and the left side only, we're going to place down an acacia wood sign coming off the side there of that um, stair. And we're going to then place down a wither skeleton skull coming off this sandstone stair. So that will be on the left side and the left side only for the exhaust for the engine. After that, we're going to then place down a skeleton skull on both sides of the stair right here. We're going to then place down a jungle upside down stair. 
like this, and then a jungle wood stair back from it. So you want a corner stair and a normal stair, like so. We're gonna go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Strip birch wood blocks back. And at this point right here, um, you can either place down a row of six of these um, jungle stairs. So if you're on Bedrock or Pock Edition, I'd place down a row of six of these jungle stairs. If you're on uh, Java, we're gonna go ahead and place down a row of six of these upside down pistons. It's going to go all the way, run all the way along the side here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we'll delete the blocks up above here like so. After that, we're going to place down a smooth quartz up down stair. And a smooth quartz top slab directly after that. Once we get to this point, uh, we're going to go we're gonna go ahead and then go back to this last um, jungle wood top slab. We're going to place down a trapdoor to the side. And this middle trapdoor, we're going to place down one out to the side from that as well. Once that's done, go ahead and move into our wings here. We're going to start off by placing down a row of 1, 2, and 3 of jungle wood up down stairs. Come off this second, second stripped jungle wood block. We're going to go ahead and go back from this first stair. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 stripped jungle wood. We're going to go ahead and place down a smooth sandstone block. And then after that, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone stair and then a corner stair like so. Our next row is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 stripped jungle wood. Then a smooth sandstone full block and a smooth sandstone slab back. Next row again, one, two, three, four, five, uh, or sorry, actually one less. So row four here of the strip jungle wood, a smooth sandstone uh, block, and a smooth sandstone slab. With that done, uh, we're going to go and then place down a uh, granite wall, a strip jungle wood block, and then a narrow granite wall like so. We're going to take our black concrete, we're going to place down a row of three, coming off these blocks here going toward the front. On both ends of those black concrete blocks, we're going to place down a trap door, birch wood. And then in the middle here, we're going to place down a polished black stone wall, a iron bar to both sides. And we also want to go ahead and grab ourselves iron trap doors. We're going to place them down on the sides here of these um, iron bars. And then coming off the polished black stone um, wall there, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone block and then a skeleton skull. At this point, if we're on Java, we're going to go ahead and do slash give space at p minecraft colon debug and there'll be underscore, and it'll be stick. So this is what your command should say right here, slash give a app minecraft colon debug underscore stick. Press enter and it should give you this glowing stick. By going up to these iron trap doors, we can go ahead and left click these trap doors until we get selected open false. We're gonna right click this and it will set to open true on both sides. We can then go to our iron bars here and just go ahead and replace them and it should connect to those iron trap doors like so. If you're on Bedro Bedrock or Pocket Edition and you do not have a debug stick, you can go ahead and very simply for these iron trap doors instead use birchwood trap doors. But again, iron trap doors aren't going to be the best to use in this situation. Anyways, after that's all complete, we're going to go then take our jungle wood. We're going to place down one, two, three blocks across this section here. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a second row of three, a third row, and then a fourth row like that across. We're going to go then take our smooth sandstone, place down a smooth sandstone block here, smooth sandstone slab, then another smooth sandstone block and another smooth sandstone slab. However, this slab here is gonna have a daylight detector. Coming off it, going like this toward the back. We're gonna go then grab a jungle stair. We're gonna place down an upside down jungle stair in this spot right here. And in this corner space right here, we're gonna go ahead and place a block underneath this. And we're just gonna place down a skeleton skull right here. So just like that at a slight angle, like that out to the side. After we have that all done, uh, we wanna go ahead and grab our jungle top slabs. We're gonna place down uh, one, two, and three, and then we're going to place down two stripped jungle wood like so, going across. Next row out to the side here, all, actually sorry, also coming off the uh, wall here in the front, there's going to be a jungle top slab. At this point, we want to go ahead and then place down a uh, jungle top slab, then we're going to place down a jungle up and down stair like so, and a second stair directly behind it, and we just want to go ahead and place down one, two, and three more slabs going forward. At this point also, we'll just take the time to go ahead and also go to the bottom of this stair toward the rear and place down a trap door on the bottom there for this little um, extension portion that sticks down from the um, aircraft. We're gonna go then place down two rows of seven of birchwood top slabs. So one, or actually sorry, this gonna be a row of six and then two. So two rows of six like that going out to the sides there. After that, we're going to go then move to a row of five. So one row of five, and it's going to have an indent from the front. So one, two, three, four, five. 
And we then are going to do the same thing here for our stairs. So we're gonna place down a birch, or sorry, jungle top slab. Jungle upside down stair, second stair like this. And then we're gonna place down two top slabs going forward and a jungle trap door there on the bottom of that stair like so. After that uh, row right there, we're gonna go ahead and place down a um, jungle trap door on the back here. And then one, two, three, four. Uh, jungle top slabs forward. We're going to go ahead and place down a jungle trap door here. A jungle, two jungle top slabs, and then a jungle trap door like that. We then want to place down two rows of four of jungle trap doors. So one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Next row is going to be one, two, three. And then after that, uh, we're going to place down a granite wall. This space right here. And we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, and four. Uh, trap doors across there and then one two come off those middle two like that to the side there After that is all complete there that right there is going to conclude what we have there for uh, layer number four and With that this is what it should look like from the top-down view Or sorry actually layer number three my bad. Um, but yeah, this is what it should look like from the top-down view uh, Plus or minus a few changes if you are uh, on a different version But yeah, this is what the top-down view will look like you'll take the right side copy it over to the left side and you'll have this overview uh, complete. Once you have that all done and looking like that, you can go ahead and move on to our next set of layers, which we'll be working on layers one and two. Moving on to layers one and two, these layers are pretty simple and just going to be adding on really to the bottom of our um, aircraft. To begin with, we'll be going ahead and going to the outsides of the wings here. We're going to go, ahead and go down from these trap doors that are kind of in front of the granite walls. So we're just going to place down a uh, granite or uh, sorry, a jungle wood um, trap door underneath that, like so. And that would be like that on both wings there, like so. After that is all complete, we're going to go ahead and then move inwards to our engines. So for our engines here, we're going to place down a polished anisite upside down stair on, on the bottom here of these iron bars like so. We then want to go ahead and grab our iron trap doors and we're going to place down a an iron bars and we're going to place down a iron bar here underneath that wall between the polished anisite stairs and then an iron bar or iron trap door there on this bottom. We're going to go ahead and go back from that iron trap door with a birchwood slab and then we're going to, or birchwood trap door and then a black concrete block right there up above it. We're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves our sandstone stairs and we're going to place down a sandstone upside down stair to both sides like so. After that's all done we're going to place down a upside down jungle stair right behind this and then taking our jungle strip jungle wood we're going to place down one two three four and five blocks back. To the sides of those five blocks we're going to go ahead and place down one two three four five granite walls and one two three four five granite walls. We're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull on both sides of this jungle stair. And then going to the back here, we're going to place down a narrow jungle upside down stair. A skeleton skull to both sides of that stair. And then a jungle top slab on the bottom of that daylight detector going back like that for um, our engines. After that's done, going ahead and moving into our fuselage here. We're going to go ahead and go to the center space here. We're going to count back one, two, and our third strip jungle wood block. We're going to place down a jungle fence gate below it, open it toward the front, and coming off that, we're going to place down an item frame with a snowball in the item frame like that for a light. Um, also, on the front here, we're going to place down a birchwood trap door underneath this black concrete block, and also on the bottom of that iron trap door there as well for the front. Then going back from this fence gate, we're going to place down two birchwood trap doors, or sorry, two jungle trap doors. Two jungle slabs and an air jungle trap door. We're gonna go ahead and go all the way back here to this section um, of the aircraft back here, and we're gonna go ahead and start going to the first. So our first block here um, before the courts, we're gonna place down a piston that comes down like this, followed by an, a chain coming off of like so, facing toward the back. We're gonna go ahead and place down one, two jungle go or jungle strip jungle blocks going forward, a black stained glass block, and then another up jungle upside down stair. To the sides of the jungle upside down stair, we're going to place down a um, skeleton skull, then a black stained glass pane, and two granite walls going toward the back. We then want to place down two skeleton skulls going back from those, like so. And uh, at this point in time right here, we can go ahead and take our debug stick for us on Java. This piston here, we'll go ahead and right click and, uh, my bad, actually, we're going to go ahead and uh, left click it until we get to select the extended false. And we'll right click it and it will extend it to true and it should uh, create something that looks like that, get rid of that wood portion. If you're on a different version, just very simply placing down a, another jungle wood block right there, or jungle, uh, strip jungle wood piece or block right there would basically do the trick. So um, that right there is going to basically do it for that rear gunner pod. And in addition, we also want to go ahead and take some jungle trap doors 
And for our flaps here, we're gonna go ahead and just place down jungle trapdoors on the sandstone right here. Uh, just to help cover that up and keep that jungle color a little bit more consistent on the bottom of the aircraft. Anyways, so with that all complete, that is going to wrap up everything we have here. Just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything. And one thing else, actually also we're going to do is for these outer engines, we're going to go and go to the outside. We're going to place down a acacia wood sign on the side of this polished anisite stair. And then a wither skeleton skull coming off this stair here. And it's going to be on the side facing toward the outside of the aircraft. So on the right side, it's going to face on the right side of the engine. On the left side, it's going to be on the left side of the engine. So just take that into account when you um, go do those engines is that they're going to be a little bit different on both sides. Um, like that and then the center engine faces to the left side so that right there will basically do it um, for that and with that that is going to conclude everything we have there for layers one and two and we'll move ourselves up to layer number three all right guys go ahead and moved into our next layer we moved into layer number four actually so not layer number three but apologize for that um, but yeah let's go ahead and move into layer four to begin with we're going to go ahead and place it on a polished black stone wall on top of that iron bar right there in the center uh, followed by a smooth sandstone block coming off that and then a skeleton skull like that coming off the front there We're going to then place down a black concrete block back from that followed by a row of smooth sandstone That's going to go back a total of 16 blocks Then we want to place down a row of five of black stained glass blocks and then one two three four five six seven eight of our stripped jungle wood and then a jungle wood uh, Upside down stair there on the very end and that right there will make our center line after that, moving out to the sides here, we're going to go ahead and place down a iron bar coming off the side of this wall here, and then a black concrete block. To the sides here, we're going to place down a birchwood trap door coming off the black concrete block, and then an iron trap door coming off this iron bar. Using our debug stick, we can go ahead and set the trap door open to true, and we can go ahead and just reset our iron bar by placing it again, and it will connect up there to both sides like so. After that, uh, we can go ahead and then place down our sandstone wall. And then we're going to go ahead and then place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 uh, blocks back. Now at this point here we do have something a little bit different. So over here on the right side of the aircraft, and again I'm going to mention the right side, we're going to place down two sandstone upside down stairs. Right. So just like that. Then over here on the left side where those two sandstone upside down stairs are, there's actually going to be two sandstone full blocks. So then at this point, on both sides, it's going to be the same again. So we're going to have a sandstone top side on both sides, and then our two smooth quartz upside down stairs, like so. So on the right side of the aircraft, you're going to have five or three of these little window slits. On the left side, you're only going to have two. So just make sure you take that into account. That's how it should be on both sides. So just make sure when you're copying the air side over that you remember that. It's not really that big of a deal, but just again, to keep this accurate to the actual aircraft itself. We then want to place down one, two, three, four sandstone walls back, and then one, two, three yellow stained glass panes. At this point here, we're going to go ahead and skip a space from the last sandstone wall, and we're going to go ahead and place down a barrier block, and then we'll delete this block that we used to get out there, and also go into this middle yellow stained glass pane, we're going to do the same thing. So we should have two barrier blocks like so, space of one between them and the uh, fuselage here. We're going to go ahead and place down a lever on the sides here, these barrier blocks toward the aircraft, and we're going to go ahead and flick the levers so that they aim downwards like so. And that will just be done there on both sides, and those will be part of our supports there for our horizontal stabilizers. At this point, we're going to go ahead and now work our way into the wings. To begin with, we're going to go ahead and take our daylight detectors, where we're going to place down one, two, three, and four daylight detectors across like so. We then want to place down, um, or actually, my bad, we'll go ahead and do... Uh, we're going to go ahead and do three daylight detectors and then a sandstone slab. And then we're going to go and grab ourselves a end portal frame. We're going to place down an end portal frame like so. And rather we'll, yeah, end portal frame and then we're going to place down a second end portal frame directly behind that. We then want to go ahead and place down uh, in this space right here. We're going to take our sandstone slabs. We're going to go ahead and go back from this first daylight detector. One, two, three, and four sandstone slabs. We're going to go ahead and take a daylight detector and place down a daylight detector. Next row is going to be one, two, three, four sandstone slabs and a daylight detector again. And then one, two, three daylight or sandstone slabs, a daylight detector. And then our next row here is going to be the same thing. One, two, three sandstone slabs and a daylight detector. Next row here is going to be a sandstone slab and then a smooth sandstone stair like so. And then a daylight detector after the smooth sandstone stair. Continuing on, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, polished andesite, or sorry, rather a sandstone stair here and then a polished anisite stair on top of it. We're going to go and then place down a 
black concrete block here, iron bar coming off the black concrete, and then a polished anti stair to this side, and a smooth sandstone stair like that. Then going back from these, we're going to place down one, two, three, and four sandstone slabs, and then their daylight detector like so. After that daylight detector, we're, we are going to place down a birchwood trapdoor on the back here like so. Uh, at this point, we're going to place down three daylight detectors out to the side, so one, two, three, and then we're going to go ahead and go back one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three smooth sandstone slabs. Then one, two, three daylight detectors across, and three birchwood trapdoors across. Next row out to the side here will be a daylight detector, then one and two sandstone slabs, then one and two daylight detectors, and then a birchwood trap door. So grab a trap door, and it'll be a trap door here, like so. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a sandstone slab, followed by a second one, and then two daylight detectors again, and then another birchwood trap door, like so. And make sure it is closed. Uh, our next row is going to be a sandstone, a row of two sandstone slabs, followed by a daylight detector, and then we're going to place down two birchwood trap doors, like that back. Then after that row, uh, we want to go ahead and then place down a sandstone slab, like this, and then a smooth sandstone stair, like so. A daylight detector and again two birchwood trapdoors going back like that. Next row is going to be a row two of smooth sandstone, daylight detector, and then a birchwood trapdoor again closed. And then continuing on back here, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of two, one two smooth sandstone, then two quartz slabs, and then two daylight detectors, which will turn to the night mode. After that, we're going to go ahead and take our Virtual trap doors and place down one and two on the back here. Next rows here are going to be uh, one, two, three smooth sand or sorry, two smooth sandstone daylight detector birchwood trap door. And make sure you do close these trap doors that will open up on the bottom here. You do not want those to stay open, so just make sure you keep an eye on that. And then two more birchwood or two more um, sandstone slabs here to the side, and then one right here. We're going to then place down two daylight detectors, like so. Again, make sure that those trapdoors are closed. And then one birchwood trapdoor on top of that last um, junglewood trapdoor. And then at this point also, um, that pretty much is it for both sides there. We do have one difference that will be on the left side. And that is going to be this um, slab right here, so the second to last smooth sandstone slab on the left side here. We're going to place down two end rods going forward from that, and that's going to be on the left wing and the left wing only. So looking at from above here, this we should get for the top-down view of the aircraft. Anyways, so with that all complete right there, that is going to wrap that up. Uh, one thing also we'll just go ahead and take care of so we don't have to worry about it in the next layer is we'll just place down two birchwood, or one birchwood trap door and then one iron trap door on top of this iron bar. And this would be on top of the engines here to both sides. So we'll just knock that out since we're already at it and might as well just finish off um, that for our engines there. Anyways, that right there is going to conclude layer number four. And with that, let's go ahead and move up to layer number five. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five to begin with, we're gonna go ahead and place down an iron bar on top of that polished black stone wall there in the front, a black concrete block behind it, a smooth sandstone stair, and then three smooth sandstone blocks back. We then wanna place down a row of five of black concrete, or if you wanna do an interior for this aircraft, you can leave this row of five empty. There isn't much interior space for this aircraft, so for us, we're just gonna go ahead and entirely close this off and uh, with black concrete so that you can't see into just a void of the inside of the aircraft. Anyways, after that, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of seven of smooth sandstone. And again, since we're not doing interior, we're going to go ahead and place down a black concrete block here. We're going to go ahead and skip the space, and then we're going to go ahead and place down a black fence gate like so. Another black concrete block, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight smooth sandstone blocks back like so. And we're going to go ahead and then place down um, a sandstone wall and then a birchwood uh, plank here on the back. After that, we're going to start working our way out to the sides. We're going to start off by placing down a polished anisite stair coming off this iron bar here, and then a sandstone stair going back from it, a skeleton skull on the side of the sandstone stair, then a sandstone stair like this, and a stair going back from it. So you have a corner stair and then a regular stair, a smooth sandstone block, one, two, three, four, and five birchwood planks with birchwood buttons there on the sides. And then take our smooth sandstone, we're gonna place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We go and double check the count here. It is gonna be eight blocks. And then a smooth sandstone stair, a polished blackstone top slab with a chain coming off like that for the waste gunners. Then two smooth quartz blocks, 
one, two, three, four uh, sandstone walls, and then one, two, three uh, yellow stained glass panes going back. At this point also, we're going to go ahead and then place down uh, two levers. So one and two on top of those two barrier blocks that are located on the sides there. After that's all done there, um, we're going to go ahead and then grab our um, iron trapdoor. We're going to place it down on top of this iron trapdoor or iron bar right there. And then a birchwood trapdoor on top of this black concrete one like that. We're going to go ahead and grab our barrier blocks and our stone buttons. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of five of barrier blocks. Or sorry, rather, a row of three like this. So it's going to come off this stair right here. We're going to go, ahead and go one, two, three toward the aircraft. And on the side leading toward the front of the aircraft, we're going to place down three stone buttons like that along the side there. And once we have that all complete there, that is going to wrap up for what we have there for uh, this layer. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and move into doing the propellers here for the aircraft. Since we do have the engines completely done, or the nacelles, um, we can go ahead and actually move into doing those. So basically, to go ahead and get started for these, uh, for our first one, we're going to build four blocks out to the side here. If we're going to do that first block, place down a skeleton skull like so, then one on the side of this of the second one, and then do the same thing right there. That's going to build our first blade. Next blade is going to be an inside wall going up like this, then to the side, and then a skeleton skull like this, and one coming off that, and we'll delete that first skeleton skull there. Going down from this, we're going to place down a uh, block right here, a, a uh, skull coming off of it. We're going to then go down from the block with an anisite wall, a block on the bottom of the wall, and then a skeleton skull like that coming off the uh, side of the wall like that going downwards. And that right there will basically make um, our propeller there. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and basically do the same thing here for our other propellers or other engines. So all of our engines here are going to be the same thing. You can obviously change the orientation here if you want a little bit. Um, that's completely up to you guys, but something I feel is a little bit unnecessary for us to go ahead and do. So we're going to go ahead and bypass changing them up, and we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing across the board for these. But just know that if you really wanted to, you could change these up a little bit to um, add a little bit more variety to it. So the engines are not, or the props are not all facing the same direction. But again, that's something for you guys to mess around with if you are wanting to go to that extent. So... Again, we're just doing the same thing here to all of our engines. And we get something that looks like that. So basically, our engines will be something like that, I suppose. And that's basically what you want there for the front. And this is what our aircraft should look like so far. Here is a aerial overview of what that will look like. And with that all complete there, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for layer number six or five of the double check and with that let's move on to our next layer before we go ahead and move on to layer six one thing i would also like to go ahead and mention for us java players is the pistons back here are ready for us to go ahead and go up to them and we'll just go ahead and go up to each one of these pistons and just go ahead and right click it to get rid of that top portion like so and that will just kind of finalize um those bottom layers there uh the reason why we wait till now is because if you place down a block next to these pistons like so and update the block space next to them they will revert back so we had to place down the layers on top of this and didn't want to risk the chance of reactivating our pistons and having to go back. So that's the reason why we did what we did there, but you'll just go back, reactivate all those, and you should be good to go. Anyways, with that, we'll go ahead and now move on to layer number six. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number six. For layer six to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and placing down a daylight detector on top of this second smooth sandstone block here. We're going to go ahead and place down a sandstone slab back from that, followed by two black stained glass blocks. A smooth sandstone full block and an air two uh, black stained glass blocks like so. We're going to go then place down a black concrete block, then one, two, three, four, five, and six uh, smooth sandstone back, an air black concrete block here, then one on top of this one here from the previous layer on the air side, smooth quartz block, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, smooth sandstone going back, and then two birchwood planks there on the very end. After that, going back up to the front, we're going to go and start working our way out to the side, place down an air brick wall on the side of this glass block here, a glass block back, a smooth sandstone block, two birchwood slabs, and two birchwood slabs come off the sides there of those slabs. After that, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight smooth sandstone blocks back, so you have a total of eight there on the side, two smooth sandstone top slabs, and then two quartz full blocks with one, two, three sandstone walls going back. We're going to go then place down one, two, three, and four uh, sandstone stairs going back like so. After that, we're going to place down one, two, three 
uh, sandstone slabs back and then a birch wood slab. We also want to go ahead and place down a block coming off this wall here and then a skeleton skull on top of it like so. We're going to go then place down one, two, three sandstone slabs again and then another birch wood slab here. In this corner space right here we're going to drop down. We're going to place down a skeleton skull at a slight angle like so on top of that block. Delete the block underneath it and there's sandstone wall like that going back and then a sandstone stair and then a birchwood trap door. We're going to go ahead and then place down two sandstone slabs, one, two, and then air birchwood trap door, or sorry, slab, and air sandstone slab, and air birchwood trap door. And once we have that all done there, that's going to do it basically for our um, horizontal stabilizers. And with that, I think we're pretty much done for everything that there is here for the uh, this layer and at this point what the next step is for us to do is to go ahead and grab some banner materials and to make some banners here on the back so I'm gonna go ahead and grab those necessary materials and I'll see you guys here shortly to make those banners alright guys so to make the banners here that we're gonna be using on the back of the aircraft we are gonna go ahead and kind of go ahead a little bit and build some banners we will be using later on on the tail section as well uh, but the banners we're going to be going ahead and using specifically in this layer here we're gonna go into our loom we're gonna need four yellow banners for this six white dye and two red dye our first banners here, we're going to place our yellow banners in our white die. We're going to go and select our banners here with a white line uh, vertically on the left side for our first banner and then a line vertically on the right side for our second banner. And we're going to basically do the same thing. So we're going to create another set of two or another set of this. So you get basically these two sets here. We're going to take our first set, put it back into our loom, and we're going to go and select the white on top that's going to sp split the banner in half. So we're going to do this white that goes across like so. So putting the banner in half on the top and we're going to do the same thing here for this other banner. So just like that, so we have these two banners here. Both these banners are going to be placed back with our loom and our red die. Our first banner uh, with a line that's toward the, ins to the, toward the right side, we're going to go ahead and then do the red corner here to the right side. That's going to be this banner. And this banner here with the white line vertically on the left side, we're going to go ahead and do the square on the top left hand side like so for these two banners. We're going to go ahead and hold on to these banners. Uh, but these other two banners we are going to go ahead and put to use here immediately. We're going to place down these two banners here, one on top of this, or one on the side of this birchwood plank, and one on top of the, or on the side of that one, so that the white there is facing toward the center there, like so. And we'll just put these banners to the side here, as we will be using these a little bit later throughout the rest of the build. But yeah, that right there is it for the banners, and that right there will conclude everything we have there for layer 6. With that, let's move on to layer number 7. Before we go ahead and move on to layer 7, one thing also for layer 6 I forgot to mention is this um, cabling here on the wings. And this right here is just going to go up at an angle uh, from this row 3 here. We're going to place down a barrier block that goes up at an angle like so. And then we're going to place down 1, 2, 3 more that go back so you have a total of 4. On the bottom of the first two, we're going to place down 2 stone buttons and then 2 stone buttons on the side there of those last two. So it should look like this there for that cabling like that on both sides. Anyways though, with that all out of the way, that right there is it for layer 6 and we'll move on to layer 7. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number 7. For layer 7 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and go to our front glass canopy. We're going to place down a wither skeleton skull on top of this glass block here. We're going to go ahead and place down a glass block that goes back from the wither skeleton skull. We then want to place down a smooth sandstone block. We're going to go ahead and skip a space, place down a birchwood fence gate, open it toward the back of the air aircraft. We're going to go and then place down two sandstone walls going back from the fence gate like so. Then a smooth sandstone block. Two pi or sorry, three pistons if you're on Java. If you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, we can go ahead and use these end portal frames instead. So our three end portal frames. There are two sandstone slabs, our sandstone stair, and then one, two, and three daylight detectors like that going back from that stair. And then three, sand three um, trap doors. Then a sandstone wall three smooth sandstone blocks back, and two birchwood planks here on the very end. On the side of these birchwood planks, we're going to go ahead and grab our banners, and we're just going to place down the banners here with the stripes like that on both sides, continuing to work its way up like so up the uh, tail. Um, after we have that done, also on the tail here, we're going to go ahead and go to this stair. We're going to go ahead and go to this slab right here in front of it. We're going to place down a barrier block, and on both sides of this barrier block, we're going to place down stone buttons like so. After that, also on the tail here, we want to go ahead and grab a lever, and on the bottom of this sandstone uh, slab here, we're going to place down a lever and flick it to connect up to this um, lever like so for our supports there. And the same thing here will be done on both sides here of the aircraft. So just like that for um, 
those supports there for the horizontal stabilizers. With that though, moving back up to the front of the aircraft, we're going to go ahead and place down a wither skeleton skull at a slight angle on top, or about a 45 degree angle on top of that narrow brick wall. Then a black stained glass pane back from it. We're going to go ahead and place down a sandstone wall, and then again, one and two um, black stained glass panes. Then one, two, three, smooth sandstone blocks. One, two, three, barrier blocks. One, two, three, sandstone slabs. And one, two, three, daylight detectors. Uh, like that going back. At this point here, if you uh, are on Java and do have a debug stick, we'll be going ahead and using that debug stick here on these pistons. So we'll just go ahead and alter those while we're at it. And in addition, we also have the ability to go up to these glass panes and we can actually change the direction in which they extend, uh, which is very helpful for us to go ahead and extend our glass panes to connect up to these to this sandstone stair here. So we'll just do these for the glass panes right here in this section and also for the front there. Just kind of helps make our can cockpit look a little bit more uh, put together and kind of more a little bit more connected and flush uh, compared to having those gaps that those glass panes do end up leaving. So just a little technique there for us on Java with the debug stick just to make things a little bit better. Anyways though at this point uh, we do want to go ahead and then grab ourselves uh, barrier blocks and uh, this barrier block row is actually going to be extended two more out from the previous layer and then two stone buttons on top of that. Then coming off these buttons here we're going to then place down that three barrier blocks which will connect up to that sandstone stair. And we're just going to place down three um, stone buttons there on the uh, leading side like so. Um, so that will be done there on both sides. And that will be your cabling that leads from the cockpit down to the wings like so. And with that all done, just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything. And everything does appear to be good to go. So with that, that is going to conclude everything we have there for uh, layer number 7. And uh, with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on up to layer number 8. I guess moving into our next layer, we actually are now moving on to layer 7. Got a little ahead of myself there with my layer counting. Um, but for this layer, I'm going to go ahead and get started with. We're going to place down a sandstone slab on top of this block here. Then a chain coming off it like so. And then we're going to place down a sandstone full block behind that slab like so. Coming off this sandstone slab and full block, we're going to place down two skeleton skulls like so. We then want to place down a polished blackstone uh, slab on top of this wall right here. And then a wither skeleton skull coming off the back, and then a chain going toward the, the uh, rear like that to go ahead and make that machine gun mount up on top here. After that, uh, this section here, we do uh, have to place a birchwood fence post on top of this right here. So, in place, that birchwood fence post is going to reset our pistons if you place the pistons. And then going back from those pistons, we're going to have, or from this fence post, we're going to place down three um, barrier blocks like so. And at this point, now we can take our debug stick and do the same thing we did before uh, by going ahead and just right clicking our pistons like so. So again, I do apologize for that. I completely forgot that the fence post does sit on one of the barrier blocks and or on top of one of the pistons and our barrier blocks do as well. So uh, again, my apologies for that one and just go ahead and set them again. They won't be altered again. At this back section here, we're gonna go ahead and then place down a um, item frame on the center right here. And we're gonna then place down a a uh, birchwood trapdoor basically on the sides of it or a dark oak trapdoor so it'll be a dark oak trapdoor here and here you're going to go ahead and just close these and then in between here on java you're going to place down a dark oak trapdoor like so i don't think you can on yeah so if you're on a different version you're not going to really be able to do this perfectly if you're on a different version what i would recommend doing is instead of doing this um this uh item frame right here go ahead and getting rid of the item frame and instead doing a smooth sandstone block here in the center like that that will work and have that dark oaka trapdoor like so um, but for us on java we have the ability to place down our sandstone stair like this and our item frame like that to kind of help make that little circular uh, communication equipment or something like that on the back there very common also in german aircraft they have that same little ring there Anyways, on the back here, we're going to go ahead and place down a smooth sandstone block on top of this one here. Then two more back, then two birchwood um, planks like that. At this point also, we'll go ahead and grab our two banners here with the red in them. And we're going to place down these two banners here on the sides of those planks with the red facing toward um, the middle there, like that on both sides. After that, we want to go ahead and grab our barrier blocks. We're going to go ahead and go up from the barrier blocks at an angle, and like that going forward. And then one barrier block like that going back. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone button here, come off the side of this barrier block, and a stone button come off this side here as well. And with that all done there, that is going to basically wrap up what we have there for 
uh, the cabling for the back. And with that, that is going to conclude everything that we have there for layer number 7 for the build. Anyways, though, with that all out of the way, that right there is going to conclude layer 7. And with that, let's go ahead and move up to uh, layer number 8. So that was actually layer 8. Um, I don't know why I'm having such a problem keeping track of the layers, but that's why you always look at the top left-hand corner because usually pretty much 99% of the time that top left-hand corner is going to be correct on what layer we're on. So definitely refer to that whenever there is any kind of issues like that. But uh, yeah, we are going to be now on layer number 9 and uh, 10, which will be our final layers here to complete the main structure here of the aircraft. Basically for these layers, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go to our tail. We're going to place down a smooth sandstone block on top of the second one here, an air smooth sandstone block back from it, a sandstone wall, and then a birchwood plank. On top of this, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone slab right here, then two birchwood planks back from that. We're going to go to the side of the birchwood planks, and we're going to go and take our yellow banners here with our white stripes, and we're just going to place them down like that on the side there of those birchwood planks. With that done, we want to go and then place down two uh, barrier blocks coming off these two smooth sandstone blocks here. And we're going to place down stone buttons coming off the side of those blocks like that. That will connect us up to our uh, vertical stabilizer. Then taking our barrier blocks, we're going to go ahead and place down a barrier block or a row of six barrier blocks coming off this um, button right here. So we're going to go ahead and go one, two, three, four, five, and six back. Pick a side you want to put the barrier blocks on or the buttons on. We'll just put it on the left side here. But we're going to place down six or sorry, four um, buttons here on the side. So this is actually going to be a row of seven barrier blocks. So we have the row of seven back. We're going to have four buttons on the left side of the first four, and then three buttons on top of the last three, like so. Then going back from this barrier block here, we're going to go ahead and also place down a row of four barrier blocks to this slab here. And then we're going to have four buttons there on the left side of those barrier blocks. And that right there will basically complete what we have um, there for the cable wing going up to that. And with that, I think that's actually everything here for uh, the tutorial. Um, so at the rate there, we'll pretty much complete the uh, in-flight model there for the SM79 without the camouflage and standard colored. To be honest with you, it really doesn't look too bad in this color scheme either. Um, just kind of in a plain color, uh, which is something that you can definitely go ahead and do and obviously modify a little bit to your liking. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and now move into the section of the tutorial, which will cover the camouflage. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go into it. But uh, with that, let's go ahead and dive into the camouflage. So when it comes to the camouflage, like some of my previous tutorials, I'm not going to go ahead and go and show you guys a block by block tutorial for doing the camouflage. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and kind of walk you through the process I went through in doing my camouflage and uh, tell you what blocks I used and stuff like that. So you can kind of create your own and in a sense, you know, you can have some time to look at my model. And if you want to try to copy it, you can. But basically what I did here is I used dark oak wood, um, stairs, full blocks, slabs and trap doors and stuff to replicate the uh, brown portions. So we have kind of a darker brown mixed into the color. We also have green. So for green, I used green terracotta, then the mossy cobblestone stairs, slabs, and walls, um, which seemed to work pretty good. Also, dark oak with trap doors were kind of used in sections where green would be. Unfortunately, we do not have access to that, um, to uh, green slat or green trap doors. So a dark oak wood was the best we had and then also you can see the glass panes here I did use some brown um, glass panes in the model um, so that was something I did do so some brown stained glass panes were worked for brown areas and then obviously green thrown in for greener areas and you can see the same thing here just on, done on the vertical or vertical and horizontal stabilizer um, you're just kind of randomly thrown in brown and green um, there's really nothing to it specifically on how you do it it's kind of just a spotted pattern so you're just kind of randomly going through and placing down the green and brown. You're not trying to do anything, you know, patterned or anything like that. Um, or like a checkered pattern or whatever. But you're going to tr you're trying to make it randomized, but also somewhat at a nice balance. You really want to have a balance of probably about 33, 33, and 33%. So this thing is going to be split basically perfectly in the thirds in terms of what colors are really being represented and shown throughout the build. And you can see just kind of what I did for it and just kind of randomly throwing the blocks in there, randomizing it and stuff like that. And it really uh, works pretty well for the build. Um, again, as I mentioned, this is built off a War Thunder aircraft. So you can look up the War, the, um, War, or the War Thunder camo scheme, which is this is what this is kind of actually loosely based off of. And kind of help use, use that to put your 
things together but best thing to do really is to look up pictures of this kind of see a camo scheme you really like and to kind of go crazy with it but hopefully this kind of helps you a little bit obviously the jungle wood on the bottom here is not going to be touched that's going to stay it's um straight jungle wood color but anyways though that right there is pretty much it for uh the camo that i want to talk about and that right there will conclude my tutorial here for the sm79 medium bomber hopefully you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use if you do up using this build i do ask you guys give me proper credit for it this being from a link to my channel or this video if this does appear on any social media sites i do ask that you guys do give me credit as long as you guys um you know give me credit for it with that though again i post social links to patreon support Derek frost westbrook for making this tutorial possible as, al as always feel free to check my patreon page the link was always will always be in my video descriptions and um with that, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is Mgear 2x4, and I will see you guys next time.